is my clipboard? No. I don't have any problems except I'm feeling like I'm locked up in some hospital for wackos. What is science but a stylistic approach to reality being cut into small digestible chunks and simply a fork to taste this unknown? The colors, but the salt of the stew. The pain, it's meaty chunks. I told you, Nurse Rex, I gave him a mouth. said he could help if I gave him my chart. Looked up, looked so stressed, and he said he wouldn't mind. Unless you are talking about Dr. Dardano's, we are going to need to up your dosage. I'd like to up your dosage. This is a mental hospital, not a damn circus. Oh, that I am. Uh, feel great for my age, that is. Uh, oh, look, Cheryl, your boyfriend, Dr. Luke, is here. <laughs> now, you know that's not fair, Silas. Luke doesn't know Cheryl is head over heels in love. That's enough, Lucy. You and the old man... You think that a mature man like yourself would grow out of such childish games? Me and Cheryl are just good friends. Besides that, I'm an aging, cranky doctor, and Cheryl's young and gorgeous. She could get any man she wanted. She's just a very busy woman. Right, Cheryl? <laughs> yeah, right. Any man I want. Now, now that that's done, so Silas, how long have you and Lucy been on a first-name basis? Oh, um, let's see. Uh, last night? Yep, and experience wins every time. I know that look. No, and unlike you, I'm not too old for that. I understand your view, but I don't think it's wise if you take advantage of her condition. She has no condition. She's a nymphomaniac. In other words, she has a craving for the physical pleasures of life that is so strong it makes you uncomfortable. And don't accuse me of taking advantage of her. I'm not the one being paid for her being here. You seem more cranky than normal. My records show that it's been a good three months since your last enema. I'll schedule one for you. Good catch, Cheryl. So, old man, any other physical or mental ailments? Well, um, recently I've started having these odd dreams. I'm gonna die soon, but not in a good way. I'm not talking about assassination like the last time. More like... like retribution. Oh, and it hurts when I pee. Excuse me, where do you think you're taking that body bag? This is a mental hospital. We don't have a morgue. Stop running in here. Excuse us, Doc, but if this body was dead, we wouldn't be in a hurry. So get us the best, biggest damn needle you have and help us. Uh, I, well, I... Damn floor! Get it off me! Get it off me! I just can't keep shooting up anyone you bring in. Todd, you alright? God damn it, Doc. I'm serious. Mainline this fucker. Uh... Oh my, it, oh my. Which one, the, the officer or the one you dropped? Don't worry, Todd, it just slid over your arm. Oh, oh fuck, Cheryl! I'm on it, Luke. I'll hold him down while you... No, don't touch him, he's got no skin. He... Oh, too late. Everyone stay back. Luke! Oh, thank you. What the hell's going on here? Or am I to guess, by the looks of complete stupidity, that none of you know either? Franken, mother of us, let it just end, please. My body is trying to live, but the mind it is rotten. Please, please, please. No, not yet. Excuse me, sir. Hello? What the hell? I'm trying to die here, what do you want? You don't remember me, do you? Why do you want to die? I know so little of you. Who were you talking to? You must give me a chance to play with you, so you can't die. What are you? Are you like me? Do you live on this side or the other? I wanted to die once, actually more than once. But someone helped me. Would you like me to help you? I think I was a doctor once. We need to develop trust first of all. I can see you are not ready to talk about it, so I'll go first. Let me show you my pain. I'll share when I wanted to die. Then later, you can show me why you want to. Wait. What if he finds out that my reason 
to want death is valid. What then? Then I'll help you die. I see no reason to accept that the body already calls. I already know that the electrical jolt I got has already fried most of my brain. So maybe a while before I'm ready to see what you want to show me. Sometimes I don't even remember who I am or what happened for years. I even forget being here. That's why I don't like it here. While I'm here, I remember everything, especially my sins. Don't worry, I have other friends to play with until you're ready. You're not that far from me right now. When you're ready, call me. I'll be listening. Be strong. Amazing. Truly amazing. I think I love you. Don't worry. It's just for your body. But let's just keep that between you and me. Our secret. One of many. Isn't that right, my little Sienna? How rude of me. I've given you a name, but you don't know mine. I guess that's right. About my people's skills. My name is Cheryl, and I'm your doctor. At least till they find out you're not an AOD. You know, agent of defense, the government's modified soldiers. That's why we even have this little solitude cell and observational equipment here. Oh, here. This is Micklin Institute. We're a mental hospital. I guess that should give you a clue what happened to most AOD. If we require the use of multi-million dollar piece of genetic cell research and cloning equipment, but all that is not important to you. You are an original, or at least unique. Good news, you should be dead. Bad news, you're not. Good news, you have recovered over 35% of the burnt and lost tissue since you have arrived. Based upon the projection of an average adult male and what you should have. Bad news? This has occurred in only 45 minutes since you were immersed into the cell. And measurements and readings were taken. What's bad about that you may say? All reading on this equipment is relayed back through the information net of Centurion systems and ends up in the government hands. In case you're new here, that's bad. It's usually good that they watch to assure that no rogue cloning of genetic manipulation is going on. Not to mention cybernetic and neurogenic adjustments. But I think if I remove you from the solitude cell, you'll probably die. I know that all sounds in this room transfer easily through the em embryonic fluid in the tube. So you may be thinking, why am I talking to you? Basically, if you wake up, I may be able to get you off this equipment before it's too late. Other than that, I'm lonely. There goes another percentage of repair done. You have absolutely no implants, no signs of medical alteration at all. Yet you are succeeding at cellular regeneration with what seems to be no no cancer cell development. That's the amazing part. Probably not to you, you see. We can create and mutate cells. But whenever we attempt to affect their internal time, they tend to mutate and become cancerous. Basically, this is no surprise because this is what occurs in aging. But its probability of cellular fatality through the cancer is exponentially increased by how quickly we age. Different cells defend limits, which make no sense because they all start from the same basic ingenious. Their complex nature is a factor, but... Oh, excuse me, I'm babbling. I'm sure a big guy like you doesn't care about this. Just tell me when you want... Just tell me when to stop. What I'm worried about is your billion dollar go is your billion dollar government grant waiting to be claimed. I'm sorry, Cheryl, but standard protocol. The police brought him in in connection to a massive murder spree that occurred at a private nightclub. Initial report says he did it. There is nothing about any so called protocol that applies to this guy. He came in with almost no skin. Ion displacement shows electrocution. 
20 hours later, he has regenerated skin and hair. You had him in that IOD tank. That's what it does. It creates a womb-like environment that stimulates the stem cells to activate and regenerate. Although I don't know, or didn't even know, that it was so fast. He is now to be secured till the police come. That, that's it, Luke. It's nowhere near that fast. But if you had asked the local doctor of AOD, you would know. That's me. I'm sorry, Cheryl. I was concerned for your safety. For everyone's safety. And, and with what you said, I'm sure I made the right decision. For your information, his signs may be stable, but genetic memory XM check shows he was dead. I am still unsure of his mental capacity. We don't have the slightest idea of any sudden cognitive return to find yourself in there. What do you think that will do for his sanity? Do me a favor, Luke. Just ignore Dr. Dardanos' rule. You hate them as I do. I got an idea. Let's treat this one like a human. Just this once. Hey, Luke. It's me. I know you're not that kind of person. Don't let fear of Dr. Dardanos control you. It's, it's not that easy. You see, your new project has already used the most expensive piece of equipment and is in room 13, high security. He will ask questions. And? Give me a complete report as to what you want and why, and I'll look it over. I'll need reports and records covering anything he would want to know. This one will take some effort as well as any related reports that will support that being sedated or imprisoned is a further threat than a benefit. You mean the usual? I assure the stories match. In case we're caught, no problem, love. Oh, and um, take Ribbon here back to her room. Thank you, Luke. I'll get her out of here. Main problem is this plan of Cheryl's. There's a strange amount of attention our new guest has already gained. It had been only 20 hours ago that this man had arrived, his insane activity, nothing new here. A hospital like ours is its own social environment, like high school. When a new guy arrives, big dogs have to test him. Is he alpha male or them? Believe me, we have some big dogs here. They decide, will they hate, fear, like, or loathe him? But old man Kardak, his only reason for being here is his age. He has nowhere else. He's a family friend of Dr. Dardanos, the owner as well as head administrator. They talk. That's the problem. I guess I should clarify that old age crack. Kardec's condition, although this is not my boss's opinion, is a natural response to living, especially as long as he has. All there are questions about the quality of the records. They at least can prove that he has passed 100. That puts him in the top 5% limits of aging humans. He feels depressed that all he knows is dead. He feels excluded by society as well as misunderstood. He has an overdeveloped sense of self-worth based upon the facts that as a doctor, he once was all that in a bag of chips. All this seems normal to me, the only exception that he believes death is after him, personally. Maybe that's normal for someone who is, was a med doctor, fought death for so long, and it will take it, you know, when. He thinks death will take it personally. Probably a long desire to be part of some grand design. For me, I guess, it would be some form of incarnation of insanity. Except I've overcome my re religious stigmas. My main problem is sometimes I watch people way too long. Instead of taking the actions I should. Sort of voyeur of life. Okay, old man, I think that's enough. The guy needs his rest. Just let him be. What's with it, Ness, Luke? I don't have to explain myself to someone like you, ever. I was a doctor before your daddy was an idea. I was a magi before your grandmother was dripping blood. I put more wives in the grave than you put women in your bed. The police come in with a screaming corpse, then less than a full day's recovery. Chill shoots through the walls as the new patient sits in his room, sits and stares, the tightly cinched jacket seeming all too thin a barrier for this man. There's no reason to worry. Not at all. Keep telling yourself that. Sun silence follows the chill down the halls. Its realization comes soon after, two hours after midnight. It was overwhelming. 
Hope was all that seemed to hold the walls sturdy. Keep the madness in their rooms, far from each other as any of them are to a common reality. Why does it always have to get so difficult? It starts with a simple request. Even reasonable if you look at the last time this happened. Its outcomes are downstairs. The end does not always justify the means. The truth? We all know it's not the request. It's one doing the requesting. So you do your all too attractive female friend a favor. Stranger yet, the authorities arrive and ask you to keep the same favor for them, even though they don't know of the original favor. This should make it all easier, but suddenly it seems creepy. You feel dirty. It's not easy to hide a patient, no matter how much it's for their own good. Why was it getting to me like this? It's not, it's not that I like or respect our Daniels. He wouldn't even work here if not for the fact that he owns the place. I think the secrecy is not the true issue here. Twelve years in your criminal psychology, and I'm feeling the fear. I've watched the fear take down better doctors than I. Does insanity have an incarnation? Can it become personified? My predecessor and mentor always said the fear was a response to the unknown. In our field, it reflects as a fear what we won't know what to do. That's the comfort we gain in understanding the world we live in, in our own form of faith. Without it, we are lost, as lost as our patience. He isn't here anymore, because he lost his faith in science. He felt the fear. He must have found something he could not answer. None of that, old man. Remember, if you fail at your job, others will lose as well. That's strange. I can't remember what case he was working on when he left us. Worse yet, I'm sure that it was one of those things that I thought I would never forget. You should check on that. First, a short power nap. It's been a long day, maybe two. I suddenly leave the hospital these days, just sort of moved into my office, slowly at first. Bring a coffee maker, then a microwave, a small fridge from the labs. They couldn't keep a sample at a perfect temperature, but still good enough for food. Then one night, you roll on a cot. For a quick nap after a double shift. Never get around to moving it out. Why do I still pay rent? <coughs> Hello. Was that you that I heard? You're quite active for a sleeper. But not everyone sees sleep as we do. It's an escape from here. Oh, I see you're not like the others here. You're not a sinner. You're a victim. Yet still, I see more. You're a mother. I understand now. You don't know this. You never even consented to it. That option taken to you as you slept, much as your child. Sorry, in some ways you deserve your sleep, your escape. But as I said, I'm sorry. For any of the sinner you know of, he doesn't deserve the peace you have given him. It seems more than once. Oh, how cute. Like some little wooden nymph in a wild grove of your lost childhood. Painfully typical. That's right, dear. You're not alone anymore. I'm sorry. Wake up, Tracy. Poor Tracy has spent the last nine years in a comatose sleep. I don't think she'll be sleeping again for quite a while. It's not like your voice has had any exercise. I do believe you've just torn your vocals. It's gonna make it hard for you to explain what has happened to you, to the doctor. That's pity. We've been waiting for such a long time. What the hell? Hey! Whoa, hey! Where'd that scream come from? I don't know. They didn't yell out a room number. Patient Dr. Alcum to please come to room 25. Patient Dr. Alcum, please come to room 25. Thank you. Sleeper? It can't be. I'm not done with you. Don't ignore me. How many years do I have to go to school to learn to be that rude? Fine, run you, bitch. I'll find you later. I don't care if you were once some badass college football star. You're just some old geezer has been to me. I know where you sleep. Room 25. I was sure that was Tracy Heckley's. Hmm. Age 25, came in here when she was 16. She seemed to enter a narcoleptic sleep. Actually, it was as near to a coma as one could possibly be and not need life support. She's Dr. Ezekiel's patient. Worst part is a little over eight years ago, she gave birth to a child. It was almost two years after she came here. The legal settlement made her continued care our expense. 
Once her parents left her with us, after she had been already sexually assaulted, I then felt sure they had something to do with it, with why she went down this to start with. Nurse Rose is with her. Should be protecting her. Need to find out who is her caretaker now. Where the hell is everyone else? Better leave the light off. Her eyes might need time to adjust. Tracy, are you okay? Tracy, you here? Tracy, where the hell are you? Poor girl. She seems to be trying to scream. But she told her vocals. Just stay there. Let me let me get you your blanket. You look cold. Here. What the hell is going on? Here's your blanket. You don't have my blanket, you freak. What is... Oh! Oh my, my little Tracy fell out of bed. Hey, don't just stand there. Go get Dr. Ezekiel. She's his patient. What a... Uh... Hello! He should be coming in right now, downstairs. Right, sorry, just... Right away, Dr. Luke. Oh, shit. Let's see. My schedule is easy enough. Only six patients to see and some paperwork. That should free up some time. Dr. Arnold said that if I uh, got ahead of my patients, I could shadow him for a few of his basement patients. That's where it is at. A person could retire on the book rights alone. Probably don't take one good case study. Only one. Should be a perfect day. What the hell is Luke doing up here? It doesn't matter once I get Dr. Ezekiel, all, all will be good. He knows what's up. Then Luke can go back to his room. Just a short run and already sore. That would be called old age. Can't help you there, Peter. First of all, I already have a full schedule. But I'll, I'll, I'll get you the help you need. Um, Have you checked with Father, Father Limmer? No, sir. It's Miss Heckle, Tracy Heckle. Give me a second. Oh yeah, room 25, let's see, the um, sleeper. That's it, right? What does she need? Sir, she seems to have awakened, as in not asleep. Oh, I see, well, happy day it is. I'll head straight there. You dear boy, go get Father Limmer. He's, uh, he's her caretaker. Who needs some basement cases? This may be just what I need. That will be fine, sir. We will both be there shortly. Just keep an eye on Dr. Luke till then. Why? And he showed me a pure river of life, clean as crystal, proceeding on the throne of God and of the Lamb in the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river was there the tree of life. This tree of life bear twelve manners of fruit, which yielded fruit every... Excuse me, Father, I am in need. No problem, I said. I was just running through this morning's sermon, uh, you know, seeing how it felt. How can I help you? Dr. Ezekiel sent me to, to get you. He said you were ne Tracy Heckle's caretaker, but you said I was hers. Why would he say that? I want you to explain it to him. Technically, he is right. But as penance to you, I assign you this duty for me and God, like your soul. I am the ultimate responsibility. Tracy is awake, sir. Luke is with her. Oh, my. The poor child must be terrified. I must go to her. Dim the lights, best I could. Got her to sit before she fell down. Nurse should be soon, here soon with pose. I know she can't speak right now. Tore vocals. But she hasn't tried even. Barely moved. Tracy, just nod if you understand me. That's what you would call a, a basic shame response. Shame she's hiding. Shame she should not even know or feel. Dr. Luca, I have those PJs you wanted. Thank you, Sh Shana. So I'll get out and let you dress her. I, I don't trust the interns right now, you know. She's just a little thing, even the... Even these may be large. Nurse, Dr. Ezekiel should be here soon. Till then, or unless he doesn't s say not to. Try to see about getting a little less light in here. Get her some curtains, and you can take them out from the other, from the employee's lounge if need be. Then try to get her to eat some pudding or, or anything very soft. Tell me if it gets weird. 
Huh? Where? Hunt, like, what would she do? She seems basically an invalid. It's not her I, I want you to watch for. It's the rest of the staff. I think you may be getting a few more visits up here from me, unless you think I'm being paranoid. Well, actually, I was meaning to say... Well, Dr. Luke, what, can, what calls the slave? <laughs> I mean, grave do head doctor to our floor. I already saw that Ezekiel was on the way. So we'll take over from here. Am I, I am her caretaker. A little bit of charity from me. Slow down, father. Not yet. She's currently getting dressed. Dear son, I'm a man of God. I'm safe from temptations of the flesh. I'm celibate. Sorry, I guess I was more worried as to how she might feel. Oh, and why did you not ask why she had to be dressed? I uh, assume she wet herself and they were still cleaning them. Maybe. So you don't think they wanted, they would have uh, brought her some new ones till then? Well, ever since we had to pay for the, her charity, her care, Dardanos, um, put a limit on what to spend? It's not like we throw them out after one use. We even have our own laundry mat downstairs, not to mention that she is still human. Well, as we sit here and argue the words of Venom, Tracy is alone and terrified. She's not alone. Nurse Shania is in there. I'm waiting for her. Dr. Ezekiel, I'm glad to see you. I imagine so. Your shift ended almost an hour ago. I heard that Tracy Hagel woke. That's great. I got it now. Heckley? What? Her name is Tracy Heckley. I don't have time to remember every patient's entire case file. Oh, but I bet you expect them to remember yours. Strange since you're the one paid to be here. If you did study her file, you would know that she has already been sexually assaulted once. That happened before I got here. And... After ta talking with Dordanos, we decided to treat her the same as anyone else. So are you telling me if I checked the rest of them, they would also be naked? That's how I found her. She recently got bed sores, and we had to let her skin breathe to assist healing. Bed sores. You always excuse screw-ups with other screw-ups? I want a complete update. I'll bring it to you by tomorrow, as well as Dr. Dordanos. You told him, sir. Don't let me catch you talking to Luke like that again. I don't know bed sores on her. Never asked to become the second to Dardanos. Now, I'm sure that intern is up to something. I just don't know what yet. What the hell? I've seen you up there gawking at the patient here. You gawk like that again, and you will become a patient. Ah, uh huh? Don't worry, my good doctor. All will be well within time. At least the traffic's not as bad as usual. Probably because I'm running early today. I hope this helps get the board off my back. I'll agree the old building is a little dilapidated. But the board keeps cutting our funding while constantly asking for some new improvements like equipment. Hell, I would like to see the old place fixed up. More than they would. Like when my grandfather first built the place. Back then, the Dardano's name meant something. Now the board that controls a little over half is constantly on me about outdated equipment, not to mention outdated methods. They don't seem to understand the purpose. They won't admit it, but I think that we clean up its outside appearance, they would leave us alone. It's not like any of them really want to come inside for a walk. The age of the facility was not the issue. Just like I tell them at all the charity funds. No people of great concern ever come here. The question is, would you prefer these people on the streets? It's public safety. That is the concern. Micklin Institutes was little more than a place for society or the government to drop off their unwanted. More to my personal taste though, the unobserved, limited resources gives us little options and cures. In truth, the answers that might be found in these studies could pose a great help to society. Then they're much more than they're returning to it could ever do. When we finally do discover something that, something new, something that may have been never known if not for the focus 
of intent it takes. A focus that intimidates most. A drive to succeed that overrides all else. My focus. A will strong enough to accept the sacrifices needed. But even more importantly, is that when we make that discovery, the funds for all that is needed improvements and the new staff and research assistance, this will make all needed to get here seem reasonable. And then finally the name of Dardanos will return to the top. Hello, this is Dr. Dardanos. You might know me, I uh, sign your check. Well, at least for now, if you are not too busy, I would like you to wake up long enough to push that shiny red button and open the gate. Now, if possible. Sorry, sir. I was up last, late last night studying for a test. I go to college over here. Look on your face alone makes being up early worth it. But I'm still waiting. It's a shiny candy-like red one. Don't worry. You're not fired. I'll find some off-clock work for you to make up for the time. Better not rain today. If it does, I'll send someone out to put the top up. Today I have an appointment with, uh, let's see, Eugene Kardak, as well as the rabbi. That's always interesting. It's been long accepted that insanity is strongly genetic. But here we have a son and a father, both obviously mad, but totally different behaviors. Yeah, I'll need to check out on the price of a, an exterior paint job out here, uh, or painting the reception hall. It seems everything here is... Some sort of off shade of yellow. In the Kardak case, we have a father who saw his wife die in front of his eyes, and, and now he thinks those same thugs who killed him or killed her is going to come back and kill him. On the other side, we have a son with the illusions of divine ascension. For a while, I played with the concept that the tragic events of these cases could be linked by some common trigger, but I have not found one. What the? You're early today, Mr. Dardanos. Why? Those under the age of 18 are not allowed on institute grounds. Must be here visiting someone. Hey, Angie, would you uh, clock me in? Uh, I have a busy schedule, as you know. I don't care what this clown told you. You need to go to the third floor for your session. But all you're trying to do is program me. Oh, and if it rains, call one of the interns to go out and put the top on my car. No problem, Dr. Dardanos. Just so you know, Ezekiel Smith has been looking for you. Oh, and we had a big change in patient 0366. Her charts are in with your cases. Before you grab your cases today, I would like to uh, remind you of your deal. These last three slates are my uh, last cases, so I'm open to observation for you today. Uh, you know, I want to watch some of those basement cases. That may be Dr. Ezekiel Smith, but do you truly find it needed that you check up on me as I get here? I am here early to allow just for that. Or in case I was, I heard you had a chance and a change in number 0366. Um, well, yes, last night she woke up 
you see, I, I think it would have been due to a treatment we have been uh, given her. Uh, since I keep a perfect record of all actions involved in her treatment as to what drugs are used. A simple recall of all my related records, as well as Father Lim Limner's uh, spiritual activities, we should find a rather related pattern for it all. Then I can assume that an in-depth and complete report will be given to me by this evening, one that will be ready for publication if the opportunity comes. This is really a big chance for you. You should get on it now. Listen to me, Dr. Smith. Uh, that girl has been through quite a bit since she's come into our care. If you remember, I gave her, you her case as a favor. You wanted a case that mattered. Well, little more is more important than her right now. Spend a little more time making discoveries and a little less time watching me make mine. That's like of you, Doc. Take the offensive and churn this against me. We both know that there was no change in her therapy since I took control. And as I did was help assure her body was in the best possible condition for a total invalid. Vitamins and prayers did not suddenly cause her to wake up. But I'll gather the info, dot the I's, you'll get your report, maybe even submit it. Then take credit if anything comes of it. All the while, I'll be doing the real work of trying to re regress her and find out why she went down to start with. As far as what happened to her before, who knows? That was when she was in your care, not mine. I hate doctors like Ezekiel. He's good, but he's only here to write papers and transfer somewhere else. Besides, if Tracy has truly recovered, we could get her out. That would be one less black mark against us. Not like Ezekiel cares, though. He has no respect for this place or the work of my family. He has no respect for me. Well, another day, another five digits. This will not do. Nurses set up these files, and they are always such a mess. Well, that's why they call it a job and not play. There, that's much better. Everything has its place. Michael, I'm glad to see you. You are here early. I have a lot that needs done. Well, Cheryl, glad to see you, and if you were late, which you never, ever are, I was just thinking about you. Of course you were. So have you uh, rethought the open option of coming to my vacation home in the mountains? Just had all the bathtubs fitted with jacuzzi jets. It's like going to heaven. As you may have guessed, I'm a little busy right now for that. Maybe some other time. I was needing your approval on a few things. You know, the pesky details of paperwork. Oops, sorry about that. Just so much. Sorry to hear that. Then I guess you'd be too busy for lunch then. So I don't mind at all if you use my office, but my notary stamp for my signature is in the desk. And you know I trust you not to misuse it. Well, the police brought it in someone while you were off. Luke wanted me to update you on his case, unless you have other things to do that are much more important. I have my rounds to go on, a couple patients to see, you know. The norm. But if you change your plans about not going to lunch, call me. I'll be with either of the car decks or in the basement. 
sometimes it's easy. It's too easy. Well, my little burnt sienna, our secret's safe. Now to cover for use of cell 13. Don't worry, my pretty thing. I'll reel you in in one of these days. Well, I should find you a special project. I've got a full day of family feud with my favorite patients. My treatment has had amazing responses with the rabbi. Dr. Gardanos, you wanted to be reminded for the weekly surprise visit to patient number 3367. Oh, yes. Arthur Sherwood. A friend of the world. Progressed to a critical stage when his henpecking wife died. It seems her strength gave him strength. Probably doesn't help that she died right in front of him, murdered, while he did nothing, afraid to act. He is a cash paying patient though. Seems his paranoia serves him well on the internet trades. He sits at a quite in a fort, quite, quite a large fortune. But he has a fierce society. Not only those who killed his wife, everyone. He hears that he'd been refitted for an AOD containment as well as recovery. To that, the government outlawed the whole program two years later. Enigma, you still recording? As always, as our agreement, I'm just not paying attention right now. That's fine. I just need the records available later on, okay? Overall, it's not an unusual problem. A bunch of government people get some BEA in, a, in their bonnet. About some new cure for society's ills. They spend their money on new equipment <laughs> for this new treatment and run out of money before anyone is even trained on how to use this equipment. Now it takes a valuable real estate in our already full hospital. That's not important now. I, I have all this equipment giving us the facilities to keep just about anything down here. Strangely enough condition that is illegal to keep prisoners in. Then along comes Arthur. His situation is a little different. He wants to pay top dollars to be imprisoned, ironically. The one that killed his wife, they were never caught. The criminal is is free while the victim is locked away for his protection. Sure, there's a social statement in that. I see that situations all too often, but Arthur is here because of the insecurities versus our securities keep all the wackos out of his room. Down here, he feels safe. We keep them out. I wonder if he ever worries about the others that are his neighbors. All that in mind, I have more important work than this rich guy's phobias. Put on professional face. Hello, Arthur. How are you today? I'm sorry. I, I didn't think we had an appointment today. We don't. But remember, we talked about this. We will expand your comfort zone slowly. Surprise visits. That's right. C controlled chaos. One visit a week. Just you. Well, let me get us some bottled water. If I'd known, I, I would have cleaned up. Oh, and I had this odd dream last night. I think it was at my old house, you know, out there. The outside world. Well, I picked up my old hat. It was a hat I would wear when I traded stock. Well, I was getting some coffee and noticed the clock. I was late, so I ran outside. 
which was strange, because I worked at home and I didn't like to go outside. But the door... You don't care, do you? What? Of course I care. Please go on. Well, at the door was this tall kid, long hair, like those kids wear these days. But instead of his own face, he was wearing someone else's face, like a mask. And then he smiled at me. Odd, right? That's just a dream. You have them all the time. You're in here, safe, and nothing can get to you. I would see this as a major improvement. Especially since it's been a while, you know, two months since we started these little visits. And I've been thinking of bringing down a guest, another doctor, Dr. Ezekiel. I feel you're ready. If you really think I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Well, that should keep Dardanos busy and cover Luke's ass as well. Honest, Luke, I told him he didn't seem to care. Well, my little project, you may be an, in an incredible discovery, but if you cause a rift between me and Luke, you're gone. Oh, yeah. Mind on the job, little women. Let's see. Ink signature, notarized stamp, and a pink ribbed dildo. Strangely in the same drawer. <laughs> My goodness, he wanted me to find this. That bastard probably wanted it to have some sort of lustful effect on my seeing it. Oh, please, mighty Dr. Michael Dardanos, use your pink rod on me. <laughs> I don't think so. I guess Arthur Shorewood should not upset me as he does. Micklin House, as it was once called, was built because of my grandfather's fear of his own dwindling insanity. A house with the comforts for him, the staff to care for and stock it, doctors to care for him, and security to keep him from escaping. And he tried often, a self-designed prison. Once he was gone, society found new prisoners and or patients to feed it. But I would not have visited my grandfather. If everything goes right, I should be able to give Dr. Smith his own case from the basement, not to mention free up my time. Some of those I'm actually giving my treatment to. I'll have to give that dream some time, though, and some thought. What seemed to be his typical threatening dream? But it smiled at him. Now for some real work. Enigma, view the records for me, please. Eugene Kardec, number 0096, original issue patient number, came to my father about 50 years ago, saying he was over 130 years old. Seems that Social Security stops paying your bills after they declare you dead. Although no death certificate was ever issued for a Eugene Kardec, my father decided he obviously was suffering from delusions of his own identity. Otherwise, he is currently over 180 years old. Although he also constantly changes that reference to World War II, but even at 180, he was not born yet. Personal note, I did find that due to what was called clerical error, his birth certificate was revoked. In truth, my data banks are the only one that holds his existence and records records it as accurate till information prove, proves
proves it in Valor. There has been no evidence so far except the inability of the public, the public to accept the range of variations there is to the human code. Thank you. That is more than enough. Getting a little preachy at the end. Just record the info, Enigma. Don't evaluate it. Believe me, after his time here, since then, I've come to see possibilities my father never dared to. Come in, Doctor. Uh, Dr. Dardanos. Just watching television, I will never get used to how your moral codes can survive with this constant barrage of sin. Looks like you're doing more than just uh, watching television. Wow, the Tower of Babel sure screwed you up. I said I was watching television. She just happens to be satisfying an oral fixation she has. Although a lot can be said for the concept of being blown while you talk to your therapist. He looks stressed, Gene. Should I help him relax a little? I don't mind, not a bit. Bet you don't mind, you little minx. <laughs> Sad to say the doctor has some issues he's still dealing with. You still work him through those doors, though, aren't you, doctor? If you mean by cohabitating with society by following a set of code or moralities, yes. I take it that you are finding the night pass I granted you to look around useful? Don't make me cancel it. Don't start with me, you snot no shit. I was walking these halls while you were still crawling in it, full of crap and happiness. I already had it on my... Oh, oh. I already had it out with Luke. Your society looks away. A perfectly good nympho. While... I give her love she wants without judgment, and I'm the bad guy. Fuck you. So someone just needs to blow you and they escape your judgment? I don't care about that. She's an adult, and I know you're relatively harmless, so it's not my problem. What is, though, is why is she in here, in the basement, you may have noticed it's high security. I have never asked or expected you to follow all the rules. But do not flaunt your freedom in the face of others, especially the doctors. Dr. Luke is my night supervisor. He runs everything when I'm gone. So I can work on my experimental treatments. Give him the respect. That is all. More importantly, though, is it that your son has been re having some side effects from the treatment? I was wondering if you ever expressed any psychic experiences in your um, youth? Unless you mean my charming effect on women, no. But my son has all my knowledge and his youth. Anything can happen. I spent my whole life trying to learn magic, true magic, but failed or, as you call, psionic. I then taught him all I knew, and then he betrayed me. Why do you ask? Nothing I would term magic, but the part of the mind that is active when psionic talents are used seems to have increased in activity. <laughs> have a nice day, Doc. Say hi to my son. Now, babe, Get that sweet ass over here and finish what you started. I think I'll leave you for now. And check on him. When you're done, she goes back upstairs. I'll be back later. She will not. Regardless of how old she is and how old he is, I should only hope to be that Randy at his age. But still, have rules. Rules that keep everyone else out. Now to go see his son, the rabbi, as he likes to be called.
Have to remember to breathe. Stay calm. Be ready for anything. If he sees fear, he feels fear. This is the one that puts a bounce in my step. Once the study is completed, the book writes itself. The rights alone on it should help us bring the rest of this hospital to the 21st century, which would be nice before the coming 22nd century. Hell, I'd be happy with late 20th century for some of this equipment. Can I have a review as I ready myself? Son of Eugene Kardak, but titles himself as the rabbi. It seems that the betrayal the old man goes on about it is that after his father shoved all the magical mumbo jumbo into his head, his son goes off to become Jewish. We trade that angle to find out who Kardak was. Just raised more questions or gave us answers we did not want to be true. Later, the rabbi was to go on and start a cult that would see him as the Metatron or something like that. Never was good at the Catholic or Jewish mythology. Not as interesting. They saw him as the voice of God. Easier than proving you are God, I guess. To make matters worse, he started doing faith healings. Miracles according to his witnesses. The statistics on his case is rather interesting. And then one day his cult goes crazy and mass suicides because they can't find him. A year later, he shows up here with self-inflicted carvings all over his body that resemble angelic sigils from the key of Solomon. A common element in these two cases are not only blood-related, but a trouble with maintaining a sense of one's identity in the world, as well as in society. One thing that we... but he thinks he's God. The other... Thinks he's older than God. I guess he'd have to be older than God if he's God's father and all. Too bad both of their wives are dead. Their input would be vital. <sighs> Remember, ready for anything. Hello, Doctor. I lost track of the days. I didn't expect you for a couple more. Actually, I decided to increase my amount of visits. Your advancement seems to be increasing in abilities. You sound worried. Why? I have cases in those other rooms for when the effects of the conditions have advanced. In no way does that prove it's safe. There is a difference here. Here, your treatment helped me to focus. But that's it. These powers are mine. I have the marks to prove it. We are not sure if any effects are temporary to the treatment or a permanent effect, not to mention the possible side effects. That's why we are here. Just remember, it's not for any crimes that you are here. Even your cult's suicide happened when you were not even there. You are here for your protection. I know. I'm sorry. But I have told you, not a cult. A coven, if you must. Have you gotten some new scars? Maybe. Actually, I had a visitor. An Alice. And she taught me to fly. See the new marks? Oh, and I don't even have a knife. How? You do have fingernails. I'm not sure I like this. I've heard more of our new patient from the other patients than from my doctors. Time to see why. Well, hello there. My name is Dardanos. Dr. Dardanos, you're at the Micklin Institute. Who are you?
Well, for the sake of conversation, how about I call you Mark? How does that sound? No. Well, what should I call you? So we can call any relatives or loved ones. They may need to know you are here and all right. Any previous conditions or medical records could be vital for your recovery and freedom. I have no living relatives. They are all dead. Long dead. Did you do it? Why would I tell you anything? For the sake of the conversation, I'll call you Mark. Unless you would prefer John Doe 6453? You seem to have a lot of repressed anger. <laughs> Only repressing is this jacket and these chains. Oh, wait, there is something you could do for me. You could remove these jackets and chains. You should be more careful in who you threaten. I am probably the only one that can help you, that knows why you are here or that you are here at all. Make me like hell.